Come on, Finn and Audrey. It's time for you to take a little rest now. My laws, you're as fat as a mollig after that big dinner. There's a belly on you as round as a football. Ah, oh, hush now. Don't be singing too loud, boy, or Betty Quaggan will be saying she can't hear herself speak. The last time she come, she was complaining that you made more noise to the church organ. She'll be here any minute now, so down on your chair, little pusscat, and if I push it underneath the table, her ladyship wouldn't you know you're there. Aye, it's quite mighty how that woman hates cats. All she thinks about is that dog of hers. And laws help her what a mean and for Satan he is too. It sounds like all the devils and hells let loose the way he barks when anyone goes in the door. Ah, oh, let her wait, let her wait. Are you in there, Kenny Taggart? Where are you? I know you're in, but there's a stalk and a smoke coming out of your chimney like the kipper house down at Peel. Ah, oh, lift up the black woman and come in. Where do you be, laws? I thought you were dead or something. Well, I'm not nor likely to be neither, while I've got me health and strength. So sit yourself down somewhere and I'll be at you in a minute. Oh, oh, what on earth, laws? What's that and all? There's five chairs in this kitchen and you've got to sit in the one when my little puss cat is sleeping. Oh. Well, there, there, Vigvish, little pussy boy. Why, the little soul must have thought it was Snape fell itself coming down on him. Aye. And I bet all that good, good roast beef dinner they ate for his dinner is near turned to sausage meat. Hmm. Where am I supposed to sit then? Well, you take that chair there. Mm. And remember, Betsy Quaggan, that there's only one cushion in this room, and it's his. Mm. Oh, I bet it was a cushion you were after. A cushion indeed. Why, anyone would think you were brought up in government house or someplace. Laws, and I can remember the whole scutcher you often enough sitting outside on a stone hedge eating your dinner. So you needn't be trying to make out that your behind is as tender as all that. Just listen to who's talking then. Well, at least we all got a good filling dinner, Terry Taggart, which is more than I can say for some people in this here parish. Pride, poverty and pianos, that's what it is. Laws, I never forget the time at the Sunday school anniversary when you were all sick red in your posh clothes and everything. Dressed up to the nines, and your stomach was that empty, it was rumbling up and down like the Corney River. Betsy Quaggan, how can you tell such lies? Well, it's the honest truth, and well you know it. You were making so much noise in the middle of summer suns are glowing that you put me right off me singing. I had been singing up to the sopranos, and suddenly I was grunting down with the altos. And the choir master was glaring at me, and there were sparks coming out of his eyes. Ah, oh, you're always the same, Betsy Quaggan. Dreaming and imagining things. Something awful. That's all you ever do for ask me. Tss! You're as full of wind as a balloon. Aye, and talking of balloons, that dog of yours could do with a few good meals to fill him out. He's that hungry, it's no wonder he's always making a dive for people's ankles and things. He's like a broomstick on four legs. Broomstick. Why? I'd be ashamed to own such a queer looking mongrel. Mongrel? Mongrel, my man, a mongrel. I'll have you know that that there dog is a real blue blooded whippet. And it's got a pedigree as long as your arm. The dog's mother came from a big posh place down north, and the father came. Father, why don't you mm, father came from? No, I, from the treacle mines at Ronig, I wouldn't even well, have so. Just took a shortcut over the round table as like and found himself in Derby. Just like that. Well, well. He never did, Kerry Taggart. Why, he was the loveliest cray that you ever seen walking round the parish like King Ori himself, the soul. Oh, well, if King Ori and his lot didn't he look no better to the whippet and his father, it's no wonder the church has got a hole full of them queer memorial stones they keep finding all over the place. Died of malnutrition, the whole lot of them, no doubt. Like that dog of yours is going to do one of these days. You downright wicked woman, Kerry Taggart. You can't buy dogs. You never could. That's what's the matter with you. It's cats, cats, cats and more cats. That's all you'd ever think about. Especially that black devil yonder sleeping away on that cushion. And I wouldn't mind betting he sleeps in the bed with you at night as well. Well, and what if he does? I could name many a worse thing you could have on your bed. I am one of them living not that far away from here neither. Aye, you needn't be putting that innocent look on your face, Betsy Quaggan, for I can tell you this much, there's no tomcat I ever come across yet that's got a bald head and smokes a pipe. 
So no, there. Listen to me, Kerry Taggart. Don't you go cast no nasturtiums at me. No man has sat foot over me front doorstep since me poor Gemma died. And you know that well, you know. Well, seeing that door hasn't to be opened in living memory, and you've got a thram and three planted out there anyway to keep out the evil spirits. Well, of course no one set foot in the door. But you've neither a lot nor tram and three at your back door, I but notice. I'll have you know there's a bolt on my back door as strong as Barua. Anyway, no invader could enter my house without that dog of mine letting rip and telling me. I can tell you, well, that's the reason I call him Manny, you know. Short for Manan and the old Manx Sea God. What Sea God? You know, the one that throws a mantle of mist whenever the invaders are coming. Ah, oh, a mantle of mist, is it? Well, let me tell you, it's more than mist yonder dog throws around this kitchen when he comes in. <laughs> the old dirt. That table leg's too handy by half. Well, you've got to insult me and keep on jawing about me whippet, Kerry Taggart. I'm going, I'm off. And I'm taking me bonnet and soda cake and things with me. I can take them somewhere where they might be appreciated. Aye, and he'll be in time too, I'm thinking. For I seen his boat alongside only a few minutes ago. My, there's a shine on that fella's bald head. Like a harbour light itself. Yeah, couldn't he miss it? Hey, that's it. That's what it is. I know what's doing on you, Kerry Taggart. It's jealous you are. Jealous is what you are. Why, I bet if some fella came round here courting you tomorrow, he could have bright green or purple hair. His mother could be a north side man with six elbows. And it wouldn't bother you as long as it was, was a male. Well, for the Lord's sake, Betsy Quaggan, what in the wide world are you talking about now? Ah, you heard right enough, Kitty Taggart. Males, that's what I'm talking about. Males. And the only one of them under your roof now is that toot of a cat on the chair. And I've been looking at that cat from here, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if it was going to have quads one of these days. Go, I would make you look a bit soft now, wouldn't it? For Nordry, indeed, I think you're going to have to change its name to Phoebe. You, if you ask me, that's what I... Well, I'm not asking you, Betsy Quaggan, and I don't need to either. For why? Because I've already asked the vet girl, that's Mm. why. And if that fella doesn't know every landmark on a little Manx kitten, who does? Well, time will tell, Kitty Taggart, time will tell. But don't forget the owl saying, when the apple's ripe, it'll drop. Vet or no vet, you mark my words, you're going to be reaping a harvest pretty soon. Perhaps you can have all the cats if you want. Why, my little whippet is worth 100 of them. I've just about had enough of your lies, Betsy Quaggan. So get out of my house this minute and get back to your own scraggy old whippet. My nanin indeed. It's butch you should call the creature, for you got me butched all right, I can tell you. Put that evil eye on me the minute he set foot in this house, he, he did. He did no such thing, Kerry Taggart. Now it's you that's telling the lies. They're rolling round your mouth like heron in a barrel. The evil eye, indeed. I could tell you... You'll tell me nothing, Betsy Quaggan. But just get out of me house, for I'm saying the evil eye has been put on me. And there's only yourself and your whippet to blame. So, if it wasn't him, then it must have been you. For the deal that's been doing on me since the two of you came next door, you wouldn't you believe. Well, it wasn't us, Kitty Taggart. Not either of us, I ah, tell you. get out, I tell you. Get out, or I'll take me shovel and brush down the crossroads and sweep the dust and fling it over the both of you. Oh, don't do that, Kitty. I'm going. I'm going. It's a cruel woman you are, though, slandering a poor defenceless dog like mine. <laughs> He'll have the leg off you the next time he sees you, I'll bet. I'm going to go home and tell him all the things you've been aye, saying about him. Aye, if you can find him at home, that is, the old sinner. For is anything like his missus, it's down at the harbour he'll be, I'm thinking, seeing if any more Vikings has landed. Aye. Female ones at that. I'll have the law on you, Kitty Taggart. I'm go straight down to the police station, I will. Yes, and you better look out for yourself in church next Sunday. For I tell you, I've got ideas that I'll put an evil eye on you. You mark my words, when you get to that bit about how the high and mighty push down from their seats, well, I'll look straight across the aisle, straight into your eyes, I will. And if you don't fall dead flat in front of the pulpit, well, my name's not Betsy Quaggan. Good day to you. Aye, and good day to you all, and good riddance, you old cruel. Now, what have you been up to, you little villain? You wouldn't do it on me, would you, Begvish? Phoebe. Phoebe, no, no, I never did like that name somehow. For nor did he, oh, my boy, and for nor did he, you're going to stay. 
Well, we better go root out some more blankets, I suppose. For if my kitchen's going to become the next Dane Crickle maternity home, it's as well to be prepared, isn't it? Oh, so come on. Come on. <laughs>